suppose we have a race car moving on a track. And the velocity of the car is given by the equation V of t is equal to 10 t minus t squared. Knowing that its position at time 0 is equal to 0. Find the equation of the position x, as a function of time. And find the value of V and x, at time 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., up to 10 seconds. And lastly, plot V versus t, and x versus t from 0 to 10 seconds. We are given the equation for the velocity of a race car. And we are given that at time 0, or t0 equals 0. Its position is 0, or x of t0 is 0. First we are asked to find the equation for the position of the car. Recall that the equation for calculating the instantaneous position, from the instantaneous velocity is as shown. Let's plug in 0 for x of t0. And let's integrate the velocity equation, 10 t minus t squared. To get x of t is equal to 5 t squared minus 1 third t cubed, from 0 to t. Which evaluates to 5 t squared minus 1 third t cubed. Next we were asked to find the position and velocity of the car from 0 to 10 seconds. Which we placed in a table, as shown here. With column 1 as time. Column 2 as velocity. And the third column as position. For example at a time of 5 seconds. We substitute 5 for t in the velocity equation. And we get 10 times 5 minus 5 squared which is equal to a velocity of 25. And we substitute 5 for t in the position equation. And we get 5 times 5 squared minus 1 third of 5 cubed, which is equal to 83.333. Next, using those points in our table, we can make a plot of v versus t. And x versus t. We just derived a formula for the instantaneous position. In terms of the instantaneous velocity, which is the rate of change of position. Our derived formula, is x of t is equal to x of t0, plus the integral of v of t dt, from t0 to t. We can define v of t, as q dot of t, or the rate of change in quantity q. So replacing x of t by q of t and v of t by q dot of t, in the above equation. We get q of t is equal to q of t0, plus the integral of q dot of t dt, from t0 to t. So the shown equation, gives us the value of a quantity q of t. If we know the rate of change of the quantity, as a function of the variable t, or q dot of t. Now let's derive the relation between the instantaneous acceleration of a point as a function of time and the average acceleration of the point. Recall that we have a general formula for finding the average value of a quantity, q bar, in a time interval. In terms of the instantaneous value of the same quantity, or q of t, q bar from t1 to t2 is equal to the integral of q of t dt from t1 to t2 over t2 minus t1 which is equal to the area under the q of t curve from t1 to t2 over t2 minus t1 replacing q with the acceleration a we get the formula for the average acceleration in terms of the instantaneous acceleration as a bar from t1 to t2 is equal to the integral of a of t, dt, from t1 to t2 over t2 minus t1 which is equal to the area under the a of t curve from t1 to t2 over t2 minus t1 The graphical interpretation for the relation between instantaneous acceleration and average acceleration is the same as the one we saw earlier for the relation between instantaneous position and average position, and also instantaneous velocity and average velocity. Let's repeat it here as a review. The integral of a of t, 
from T1 to T2, is equal to the limit. As delta T goes to 0, of the summation from I equals 0 to N minus 1, of A of T1 plus I delta T, times delta T. We can graphically see what the summation looks like. Where A of T1 times delta T, is the small rectangular area, with a height of A of T1, and a width of delta T. And similarly, A of T1 plus delta T, times delta T, is the small rectangular area, with a height A of T1 plus delta T, and width delta T, and so on. Summing up all these small areas, gives an approximation of the area under the A versus T curve, which we can denote as AA from T1 to T2. The approximation becomes more accurate, as delta T becomes smaller, and hence N becomes larger. The exact integral is shown here in blue. You can use the slider bar to change the value of N. And see that as N becomes larger, the approximation becomes more accurate. When you'd like to continue with the lecture, please press the play button. Now let's derive the relation between the instantaneous acceleration of a point as a function of time and the instantaneous velocity of the point at the same time. Recall that we derived a general equation for calculating the value of a variable q of t given its rate of change as a function of time, or q dot of t. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So replacing q dot with a, and replacing q with the velocity v, we get a formula that gives the instantaneous velocity, from the instantaneous acceleration. We have, v of t, is equal to v of t0, plus the integral of a of t dt, from T0 to T. Note that we can define higher order derivatives, such as the jerk, J, which is the rate of change of the acceleration. The jerk can be calculated. If we know the acceleration, velocity, or position, as a function of time, using J of T, is equal to the first derivative of the acceleration at T which is equal to the second derivative of the velocity at t, which is equal to the third derivative of the position at t. Also, if we know the jerk as a function of time, then we can calculate the acceleration. Using the equation a of t, is equal to a of t0, plus the integral of j of t dt, from t0 to t. We can go on and define higher order derivatives, such as j dot, j dot dot, j dot dot dot, etc. However, in practice, only derivatives up to the acceleration are needed to write classical mechanics physical laws. In practice, the highest order derivative that you will encounter, is the jerk. Which is needed for some machinery applications, where we need to guarantee that the acceleration is smooth, in order to minimize vibrations. Speed is the magnitude of the velocity, i.e., how large the velocity is. Thus, speed is a scalar value that does not have a direction or sign. In one-dimensional kinematics, the instantaneous speed, is simply the absolute value of the velocity. For example, if we have the shown graph of velocity versus time, then the corresponding graph of speed versus time, looks like this. Note that speed is always positive, since it is equal to the absolute value of the velocity. And therefore the S versus T graph lies above the horizontal axis at S equals zero. Similar to the relation between instantaneous position and average position. And the relation between instantaneous velocity and average velocity the relation between instantaneous speed and average speed in a time interval is s bar from t1 to t2 is equal to the integral of s of t dt from t1 to t2 over t2 minus t1 where t1 is the starting time
and T2 is the ending time of the time interval. Shown here is a summary of the relationships between all of the 1D kinematic variables. We have found 11 relations, which may be categorized as follows. First, in equations 1, 4, 8, and 11, is the relation between the instantaneous value of a variable, and the average value of the variable. Which is defined as the integral of the variable from t1 to t2, divided by t2 minus t1. Second, in equations 2a and 5a, is the relation between the instantaneous value of a variable, and the average value of the first derivative of the variable. Which is the value of the variable at time t2, minus the value of the variable at time t1, divided by t2 minus t1. Equations 2b and 5b, are the inverse of equations 2a and 5a. They give the the instantaneous value of a variable, given the average value of the first derivative of the variable, and an initial value of the variable. Next, in equations 3 and 6, is the relation between the instantaneous value of a variable, and the instantaneous value of the first derivative of the variable. Which is the first derivative of the variable at time t with respect to t. Then in equations 7 and 9, we have the relation between the instantaneous value of a variable, and the integral of the variable. Which is the value of the variable at a given time t0, plus the integral from t0 to t of the variable of t dt. Lastly, in equation 10, to go from the instantaneous velocity to instantaneous speed. We take the absolute value of the instantaneous velocity. This is a tabular view of the equations from the last slide. Click on any row, to jump directly to that section. Next I will present some other useful kinematic quantities and relations, including Relative position Relative velocity And displacement The previous derivations Used one point, on a one-dimensional path We defined the position of that point As the signed distance between this point, and a reference point O Suppose, we have a second point on the one-dimensional path. Let's call the first point P1, and the new second point, P2. P1 and P2 can represent, for example, two race cars on a race track. It is often very useful to find the relative position of point P2, relative to point P1, or vice versa. For example, in the case of race cars, the relative position can tell us who is ahead and by how far. Let's call x1, the position of point P1. And x2, the position of point P2. The relative position between points P2 and P1, also called the position of P2 relative to P1, or x2-1, is given by, x2-1, is equal to x2 minus x1 and the relative position between points P1 and P2, also called the position of P1 relative to P2, or X1-2, is given by, X1-2, is equal to X1 minus X2. Thus, X2-1 is equal to negative X1-2. Note that since X1 and X2 can be a function of time, therefore X2-1 and X1-2 can also be functions of time. In other words, x2-1 of t, is equal to x2 of t, minus x1 of t. And x1-2 of t, is equal to x1 of t, minus x2 of t. The relative velocity follows from the relative position equation. Just take the first derivative of the relative position equation with respect to time and we get that the relative velocity between points 2 and 1, or v2-1 of t, is equal to v2 of t, minus v1 of t. And similarly, the relative position between points 1 and 2, 
or V1-2 of T, is equal to V1 of T, minus V2 of T. The relative velocity between two points is useful for finding out how much faster or slower one point is moving relative to the other point. Displacement D is defined as the relative position between the current position of a point, x of t, and its position at a previous instance in time, say t0, which is called the reference time. Note that the rate of change of displacement, is equal to the velocity. This is because the rate of change of displacement, or d dot of t, is equal to the first derivative of d with respect to t. And taking the first derivative of our above equation for d, we get dx of t dt, minus, dx of t0 dt, which is equal to dx of t dt, minus 0 since the derivative of x of t0 with respect to t is 0. And so we have dx of t dt, is equal to x dot of t, which is the velocity at t. Also, note that if the displacement of a point is 0, i.e., d is 0, then this means that the point is located at its initial position at time t0. In other words x of t is equal to x of t0.